from the city of the sun You could have stayed, it's only over when the day is done I never knew you was a runner, yeah And I mistook you for a son It don't matter what we think when it's all over Cause this is our last chance Is it fun? Fun. Fun. <laughs> After me. Ready? Happy. Oops. Happy. New. 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 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> Today is August 22nd, 2024. It is 11.30 p.m. I should have stopped, you know, for the next day, but um, I'm starting earlier than usual. What I wanted to cover tonight was discussions on day three while Harry and Meghan were uh, in Colombia. But um, I wanted to tackle maybe one or two tweets, recent tweets before I get to this tweet these are all tweets while harry and megan were in uh, colombia these were the one that i wanted to cover tonight but apparently while i was not on twitter most of the day there were some good discussions that were going on so that's why i was putting the dates next to it which is uh, today and i realized i have a good amount so this might be a video by itself maybe i'll cover this another day um, if you watch some of my old videos, I told you guys there were some tweets, discussions that I came across while Harry and Meghan were in Colombia. They were good discussion, but not really to share them in the in the moment. So if you follow me on our part of Pew Service, where as the tour, the Colombia tour, the visit was going on, and I was creating uh, videos, I was putting them out. On the day of so these were not that important to put them on the day of but they were good discussions so I saved the tweets and the links for me to come back to them like today which I thought I was gonna cover but there's new topic that's coming up so I thought they were uh, cover first before I do this so let's see maybe over the weekend I'll be able to cover the old tweets all right, so we're going to start with these, some very good discussion, and they are making reference to the Columbia trip, okay? 
Uh, these are making reference to the Columbia trips. There are some articles I'm probably going to read, and some of them I've already posted on my community board. You probably have read the Vanity Fair article and some other screenshots that I share with you. So you've seen these already. So I want to cover them myself. I need to read the article. All right, so let's look at the background. I think this is where I'm going to put them on PYTE because it has not, well, it, it does throw some shades to the left behind royals, but it's more on the Sussex's uh, type of uh, positive coverage. All right, so this is the background. 3,958 subscribers, new subscribers, welcome. Estimate revenue, $26.35. Up here, when you look here, it says, help us promote fairness and ensure YouTube works for everyone by voluntarily telling us about yourself. We'll keep responses confidential. This is not the first time they've asked me. Couple times I try to respond, but when I read the fine print, because it's independent, it does not at, uh, attach with YouTube. So if it was directly to YouTube, I'll respond it. Sometime I started responding to the information because I know the type of information that I'm sharing with you guys. A good amount of people don't like that. So I don't know who I don't know who I'm gonna give my information to if they're not associated with YouTube. All right, so I stopped responding. So I don't know if this one is the same thing as previous one that I've come across. But anyway, so that's that. Um there's <laughs> whoo I have 1,431 views in the last 48 hours. Yesterday I was making some short videos and uh, this one is not a short video because it's more than 60 seconds. So I put some uh, dancings that Harry and Meghan were doing while they were in the Columbia. So that's what this one here, it has 1,000 plus um, views. All right, so let's go on Twitter. I will come to this, but let's, I want to follow my list. I'm not sure they are in the perfect order, but I want to follow my list. This is the first tweet. Vice President, official statement, the UK media got caught lying again. <clears throat> okay, so there's no comment. Let's read the screenshot. Ooh, it's very small. They finance it with their own resources, Vice Presidency, by visit of Dukes of Sussex, which Harry and Meghan. The pronouncement was made after the versions of some media were known that assure that allegedly the visit was financed with resources from the state. Yeah, I was reading some stuff about, oh, uh, did they have money to, uh, you know, the security that they got and all of this, you know, the same BS that the UK keep on putting down. All uh, right, so by William Cortez. The pronouncement was made after the versions of some media were known that assured that allegedly the visit was financed with state resources. So what? So what if the state resources decided to uh, fund their thing? Even though it's not true, but it was beneficial to the country. But Harry and Meghan know better, and this is why I'm going to title this uh, video uh, Crash Course How to Move Forward as Non-Working Royals. Harry knows these people very well, and thank God they got the money. They funded themselves. All right. Um, the event developed and the various places visit were co-financed with resources of cooperation and international philanthropy that were generously added to this visit. The Ministry of Equality and Equity and the Vice Presidency guaranteed the technical requirements, mobility, and the participation of young people, women, and communities. The Vice Presidential Office added to the information. Okay, let's see if I could read this because it's very small. Vice Presidency strengthened the voices of equity in Colombia. The successful visit of Prince Harry and Meghan Duke and Duchess of Sussex, international media described as a success, the visit of Prince Harry and Meghan Duke of Sussex, uh, Meghan Dukes of Sussex, invited by the Vice President and Minister of equality and equity friends elena marquez mina his okay it's very small i'm trying to make the word his presidents serve to enhance in the country quality education the mental health of children adolescents and young people economic autonomy for women and the richness 
and Cultural Diversity of Colombia. This visit was the result of a collective effort the Dukes financed their trip and that of their work team with their own resources, there it is here, the Ministry of Equality and Equity and the Vice Presidency guaranteed the technical requirements, mobility and participation of young people. I feel like some of them are being repetitive. Uh, mobility and participation of young people, women, and communities. Colombia is waiting for, okay, is waiting for you back. This country they knew is the country of beauty, diversity, and cultural wealth that we want the whole world to know. France, Elena Marquez. And uh, I'm glad they did this because when you look at in the U.S., sometimes, okay, I've never been to Colombia. But when the media is talking about Colombia, it make it seems, okay, I'm saying this because this is what the media made us, at least me, okay, I'm talking for myself, make me perceive Colombia as like a drug cartel, there's all this crime going on, and every country they have crimes, no matter which country you are and part of the world, from third world to uh, developed countries, the U.S., like the, okay, they all have crimes. But the way they frame, the media frame Colombia as this cartel, uh, you know, there's like this jungle, those people in the j jungle creating drugs to ship to the, that's the image they made me believe, okay? But Harry and Meghan going over there, showing the cultural aspect of Colombia, the music, the dancings, the uh, the art, the children, that little girl who held Megan's hand, you know, it bring joy to my, you know, it just bring joy to people. It was so nice to see. So now the narrative are not working, not the U.S., I don't know what, well, right now the U.S. is focusing on um, election. There's the DNC going on, so their focus is completely off. Uh, but the U.K. keeps on pushing their narrative for you to see uh, Colombia as this worst place on earth, the same way they made it uh, Nigeria seems. Okay, so there's no comment. Let's leave that. All right, did I? 17. All right, let's go to the next one. I have to make sure... I don't miss anything. Next one. Okay, so there's this here. Lucia said, nope, the virtual media will never belittle Harry and Meghan's successful visit. Viva the Sussexes. All right. So there's another one here. Uh, long live Petronius, long live France, and long live the Dukes. Today, Petrono is one of the most important festivals in Latin America. It has become a musical, gastronomic, artisanal, and cultural event. There's one of the comments. One of the derangers say something like, uh, oh, those people were going to be there anyway, uh, so it's not like Harry and Meghan make any difference to make a, a dent. Okay? the I don't know if I have it on the list, but they gave, uh, what is it, Columbia Authority, Say it was a success, uh, the amount of money uh, they made during that time that the, the Sussexes were over there. So one of the things that I said to that deranger, and then I blacked it, and I said, so, you know, there's a homework for you. Go compare this year event and compare to last year. I don't know what this person said. I blacked it afterward. Okay? So they know the people who, the officials who know the difference, they will not say that if it Harry and Megan's visit did not make a, a difference. All right. So I read that. That was August 20th, 2024. It was a complete success to invite Harry and Megan, vilified by royalty or aristocratic, hypocritical false brand, rabble who do not forgive the rebellious couple for leading a more authentic kind of life. The Sussex visit to San Basilio de Palenque to several schools, their presence at the forum in which 400 Afro-descendant women from Narino, Cuca, and Valel participated and their participation in Patronio was a hit. Even though many of our Greek, was it Shiksha? aristocracy want to belittle it. 
This not royal, but Real Visit has filled foreign newspaper headlines and has managed to position us in places where we had never existed before. That is true. Like I was just saying before, the image that the U.S. media made me, okay, I'm not talking for all Americans, just me, just me. The image they put that they made me see Colombia as this bad drug uh, cartel, uh, the, like they live in a jungle creating drugs and um, uh, kidnapping people and all that. That's the image they made me believe. Okay, but seeing Harry and Meghan over there, seeing the children, the kids dancing and all of that completely erase everything. Again, this is not to say Colombia does not have crime because in every country you will find there are crimes. Crime exists in every corner of the world. Okay, but um, they report it differently though. All right, so that's that. Okay, us places we had never existed before. I would like to congratulate the governor of Val de Cuca and the mayor of Cali for their unrestricted support who understood the importance of this visit and Francia Marquez. Definitely. She, the vice president, she did a wonderful job. And I compare her, well, I think all Colombian, I've just realized that well not just because i've mentioned it in previous videos that they know how to grab the opportunity the from that little girl at the school who saw megan and she's like i'm not letting megan go to the musician where harry and megan were walking around and there was this musician i made fun of it but later on someone um uh, interpret uh translate what he was saying but before I saw the translation, I'm assuming the translation is correct. Um, before I saw the translation, at the time that I was recording it, I was like, oh my God, he's talking too much. He's taking, uh, this is not the time to keep the president, um, you know, to be talking. And then I was like, maybe, you know, he's grabbing the opportunity. Maybe this is the only time he'll get to meet the vice president person in power who has who could make things happen so he grabbed the opportunity to let the vice president know what's going on in the neighborhood so from reading the the translation or someone in the comment section who translated saying that the the musician was saying the things that the neighborhood needed a place for people to be able to you know to perform do things uh instead they're using the street to do that Okay, something like that. I'm just paraphrasing. All right. So him, the musician, was able to grab the opportunity. The vice president herself, she grabbed the opportunity to be connected with Megan. When? At the UN, a completely different time. And ever since, they've been in connection uh, and contact trying to make things happen. And the last time I've heard, uh, Megan wasn't able to do it. So this time, there it is. So... Colombian, I think this is a good thing. When the opportunity occur, if you know what you want, you grab the moment and make it happen without harassment or anything like that. But um, so far, I've seen three Colombian, and that trip alone made me realize Colombian grabbed the opportunity to make things happen in a positive way. All right, so let's see here. I read this, long live El Petronio, long live the Sussex, long live France, uh, long live the culture of our Pacific coast, may the marembas and drum continue to sound, the rhythm, the vish, the tamba, okay, I'm gonna pronounce these things wrong, the tum, tumba kate, the voice of the singers, and that wisdom from which we have uh, so much to learn. Okay, this part is covered, but I think that's what it says. Wisdom from which we have so much to learn. All right, so that's that. Are there any comments? There's no comment. All right, so this is what I like about the squad. When they see something, they share it. All right, so let's go to the next one. Next tweet. The British tabloid have met their match. Colombia is exposing their lies to the world. I love that for them. Are there any comments? No comment. There's another one here. That's a retweet. Let's go to it. Contrary to the lies by the toxic British tabloids, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex financed their trip to Colombia with their own resources, said the Vice President Francia Marquez. 
All right. They finance it with their own resources, vice presidency by visit of Dukes of Sussex. The pronouncement was made after the version of some media were known that assured that allegedly the visit was financed with resources from the state. Okay, that's the thing I just read. All right, so let's see this. I'm going to come back out. Yeah, so it this is in Spanish. The UK media liars, good that you put out good that you put out this statement okay tag couple people no one who is not a colombian citizen should be asking this we know who was blowing up your phone so ask the sussexes aren't takers they are givers that's true that ends oh i thought that was in spanish okay uh, this person tag all of those uh, uk papers uh da, 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 that's in spanish all the disgusting UK tabloid do is lie about, about Prince Harry and Meghan. It's good the world can see you all exposing yourselves for the racist C you are. There's the clap. Okay, that's in Spanish. Did they pay for their security? Uh, did they pay for the hotel? It's none of your business. But I think this is the only thing they probably will ask. We will need security as we walk around to make sure it is safe. Okay, here there's most hate and you are one of them. Hate damages your health. Okay, so that's all of that. Let's go back. Go back. Uh, and, oh, that was that, right? Did I read everything? Okay, so these are the things that I read. Office of the Vice President of Columbia. The successful visit of Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Translate. Okay, so there it is here. I read that already. So let's go to the next one. Uh, oh my god, 82. I keep on... Okay, so that's the same thing again. Uh, financially independent, Harry and Meghan are the only royals who finance their own overseas trip with no cost to taxpayers. They also bring global spotlight onto the organization and that country. Record set straight. Alright, so I read that already. So the different caption. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so there's this here. There's no comment. Uh, all right, so let's see. So happy to hear that many British outlets are now realizing that F01 found out season is here. You cannot claim two people to be irrelevant, then proceed to stalk them at every opportunity and then complain about being denied access. All right, this I shared it on my community board already. So there's that here. If you purchase independent review, okay, so let me focus on these. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle pull off another successful tour that might have the British press up in arms. In May, they were invited to visit Nigeria on behalf of Invictus Games, which led to Colombia requesting the Sussex's presence in their country. However, the UK media hates that they aren't giving access to the couple, which might be Harry and Meghan's saviest PR move yet. Okay. The Telegraph criticized the dynamic duo for keeping them at bay instead of allowing their reporters and photographers to get a close-up view. Unlike a traditional royal tour of old, the media were not invited, save for one hand-picked reporter whose job it was to relay each event to newspapers and other outlets across the world. The outlet complained the chosen journalist was an online reporter from U.S. publication Harper's Bazaar who duly filled a brief overview of each engagement. That's these people undoing. They had all the... And then the worst thing is, throughout the event, whatever small information that they got, they still turn it into a negative. From what I've heard, there was a WhatsApp group that some UK media were part of, and then they start spreading misinformation, their stupidity, they remove them from the WhatsApp group. So every opportunity they give them, they keep on effing it up. Uh, they, I, I don't know. When I keep on saying evil originated in the UK, it's like every day I keep on being proven I was right. Because these people have nothing of positive to say. Everything is negative. All right, so let's continue. But the Telegraph is failing to see is that Harry and Meghan are no longer senior royals. As private citizens, they can control the narrative. If they allow members of the royal order to join in, we all know what those headlines will look like. There it is. There's no reason for the Sussexes to subject themselves to such harassment or abuse willingly. While, and then if he does give them access, 
Okay, this and if Harry dare to complain of their misinterpretation of the event, they're gonna say, you should have known this is what was gonna happen. Okay, this is what they would have said. While curated snapshots only tell one part of the story, the British press is forgetting that the video coverage will always tell the real story. While the royal family may not enjoy the Sussex's goodwill tours, it points out the magic the palace is missing, especially with Kate Middleton largely out of the public eye with her health battles. Yeah, they use that uh, whenever they can, but uh, when they want to complain or wants to look good, their health is no longer the matter. But whatever. Tina Brown, author of The Palace Papers, Inside the House of Windsor, The Truth and the Turmoil, might have summed it up best after the couple's trip to Nigeria. Quote, when I saw him and Megan in Nigeria, I had a nostalgia. I felt this is what it could have been. She told the BBC in May, these two who are enormously appealing to the public and who are very good at it, were out there in Nigeria sort of looking really attractive and being appealing people. Harry and Meghan had left a charisma vacancy at the palace. I don't know. They had Princess Diana. They didn't want her. Princess Diana was very appealing to the people and everything. They did not like it. Harry, you know, blood family, they accepted. And then Harry saw someone who could help the institution, but they rejected her. So he left along with her. All uh, right. So the the UK... But in this case, um, how... The UK do not... Correction. The royal family. Not the UK. The royal family. Um, how the royal family do not want to evolve they want to bring everybody down to a level of stupidity uh, because they do not want to be uh, improved themselves so this is an audio here 21 seconds but in this case um harry turned down uh, harry's team turned down every application from everything from the bbc to the itv to even you know, very pro Harry and Meghan newspapers like the Telegraph in UK. All of those were turned down, and they okay. They don't need to be a pro Harry and Meghan. All they ask for is to be fair. You're gonna cover them. Just be fair with your reporting. You don't need to go out of your way to write nice thing. That's not, from my understanding, this is not what Harry and Meghan want. Okay, you come and see us. You just report it as you see it. Don't make up stuff to create a narrative. All uh, right, so, oh, did it finish? I invited one single digital journalist from Harper's Bazaar that did, but in this okay. case, um, they all bring it up on themselves. Okay, there's no comment. Let's go to the next tweet. All uh, right. It's not Harry and Meghan's fault. He warned them so many times. All right, this one I'm gonna read. All right, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have reinvented the royal tour Vanity Fair. I have it open already. Uh, this I've already shared it on my committee board. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have reinvented the royal tour and between the dancing and cultural experiences in Colombia, the Duke and Duchess sat for some real talk that emphasized the global nature of the issues they're quickly becoming expert in. Okay, August 22, 2024. Oh, so that was yesterday. No, today. Well, I'm good. Today. All right, we've known that Meghan Markle was a proficient Spanish speaker ever since her pre-royal days when she spoke about her stint working at the U.S. Embassy in Buenos Aires. But it wasn't until this weekend during her four-day tour of Colombia with Prince Harry that the public saw those skills at work. I think some of the squad have seen some hint here and there. When Harry first introduced Megan to the public, they went on walkabout or something like that. There was a person in the uh, you know, like in the crowd, um, Megan spoke Spanish too. Okay. Um, at a Sunday panel in Cali, the country's third largest city, Megan delivered remarks in Spanish at an event aimed at uplifting the nation's Afro-Caribbean women. Quote, because we are in your country, my husband and I can feel this embrace from Colombia. It's incredible, she said. The culture, the history, all of it was a dream. This trip was a dream. I can feel this community and this is the feeling that is the best thing right now. Later that day, she even served as translator for Harry as the pair spoke to concert goers at the Petronio Alvarez Pacific Music Festival. 
Okay, the first uh, quote was when Megan was sitting on stage and she was telling the vice president, thank you, and all of that. Okay, and there's the translation. The second one was when they were, uh, which she said here, at the festival. They were on stage. Harry started speaking in Spanish and then she's like, can you help me? That. All right, so there's that. The Duchess connected earnestly with a group of regular people in a country other royals might not have been able to visit. Again, that brought me to the part where, uh, where Harry was talking to Melody Hobson, where he said when they sent him to different countries, he doesn't always go to all the nice places. He goes to the places where, you know, where people, you know, where the other royals, like this statement we just said, they will not go. But this is where they usually sent Harry. I, I get all of my passion, inspiration and energy from young people. Um, and that is from from the ages of six or seven in the Caribbean, when you get a six-year-old turning around to you and telling you exactly how much damage your country and the developed world is causing them, um, all the way to 28, 30-year-olds who, at some point in their life, have, have already a better understanding of duty and service than I ever did at that age, um, because it's all about giving back. So I think, I think that, look, Lots of, I think lots of people say that oh, your, job, your job of traveling the world is, 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 is wonderful. Of course it's wonderful. But when, I go to, when, when we get sent to some countries, we don't always get to see the beautiful parts. We're always there trying to deal with some of the issues, but also doing everything we can to bring people together to, to make change, to make positive change. And, and it's an absolute joy and a privilege to meet the younger generation of, of change makers across the world who genuinely believe in, in, in the fact that they, as a single person and as a group and as a community and as a nation, not only can change their country, but can change the world as well. And that is what keeps me going on a day-to-day -day basis. All right. And this is where also I said with Harry, while the royals were sending him to places they don't want to go, meanwhile, they were training Harry to be able to see the people for who they are um, and be able to have some connection with them. And now that he's older, he gets to understand these people better than anybody, than any of the royals. Okay, at least not an official capacity and the scenes were a reminder of what the Windsors are missing now that she and Harry have set up their own court in Santa Barbara. Still, it's hard to get the image of their days as representative of Queen Elizabeth II of our minds and that might be why their recent international travels including a February trip to Whistler, Canada and a May tour to Nigeria have felt so familiar. The recent trips were made at the invitation of government officials, but as the British media is quick to point out, they are not official royal tours. Even though there isn't a cut and dry definition of an official tour, it generally refers to the fact that when working royals travel on the public purse, they are often representing the head of state at the request of the foreign office. The traditional royal tour is uh, about diplomacy, managing relationship with the head of other countries. That's their loss. That's their loss. The Sussexes return to the road in 2024 is a sign of just how much their ambition have broadened since they left the royal fold. Over the last few years, they have been collecting experiences and making connection on issues that include veterans advocacy, mental health, online safety, and women's empowerment. Now they are beginning to call attention to just how important those issues are to people around the world called it the next step and their plan for world domination. Wow. Or at least their path to global policy change. Yep. We need to keep on praying for them because this is what Princess Diana was doing and then you see what happened. Maybe sometimes it was. Um, maybe in a fit of peak, maybe she did get fed up with me or maybe had a point to make. But that's part and parcel of the job, um, which, uh, you know, I enjoyed. I was very lucky to travel with her for eight years um, around the world in some extraordinary places. But that's one thing. What, what admired me more about Diana was, wasn't that, was the, the way that she seriously attracted herself to those that really wanted her to do something. And she did come back to the office and did make something work.
and was genuinely interested. This wasn't a job of work just to tick the box, oh, I've been to that charity. She made things work, made people feel special. I think the, um, the reason why the interest is still there is because that, you know, during her very short reign, Diana made such an impact on royal life. Um, because she was so different, um, she was very media savvy. There wasn't a day, I don't recall, in the years that I went there, there wasn't some story um, in a newspaper. And this was, of course, all prior to the media technology we have now and uh, Facebook, Twitter and so forth. Every, everyone today is a paparazzi, effectively. So the press interest at that time was, was huge. But of course, most of the publicity was very positive. So people, you know, identified with that. Her work, her, her appeal to people, and then the sudden tragedy of her death, and then the sort of effectively reshaping of the monarchy, and now the very popularity of William and Harry, and this sort of close, identifiable, you know, relationship that they have, and the work that they do is almost, as I say to you, a carbon copy of what their mother was. And I think this is where the interest has come. But they identify in William and Harry a sort of a carry-on from where effectively Dinah left off. William's done his stint as a helicopter pilot, flew for the last time this week. I think it's a good job. He did that. He was very lucky and very good at his job. And hey, that's, that's being part of the royal family. Now he said, look, with the, with the Prince, sorry, the, the Duke of Edinburgh now officially retiring, the Queen stepping down at 91 plus, they are coming in to the arena now. So their royal duties are gonna get a real big kickstart. But where do they go? The best template they've got is the one of their mother. And they're picking up exactly where their mother left off, both in terms of the work that they're doing, center point for William, Harry, the AIDS crisis, and all now that their new challenge, their joint challenge together with Kate in, 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 in mental health, which is something that faces every single one of us in this country. And then there's the humour, the fun side of it. Harry, the, an international global celebrity, make no mistake about that. You know, he's bigger than any pop star well, you, you can find. But he doesn't speak like his father. He speaks like somebody out of a boy band. Th this is the appeal that he has. And it's his generation that will, in, 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 in the fullness of time, decide how popular this monarchy is. So in my view, I think the Queen to this day and other members of the royal family have a lot now to thank. Diana and her two sons particularly, for the way the, the monarchy is actually going in its direction. Because it is exciting and it has changed. All right, we need to keep on praying for them. On the Columbia trip, which lasted from August 15 to August 18, Meghan and Harry travel only as representative of the work they've done themselves. The Duke and Duchess were invited to the country by the nation's first black vice president, Francia Marquez, who explained her reasoning in a press conference soon after the couple's arrival. Quote, how did I get to know Meghan and Harry? I first encountered them through the media and I particularly watched the Netflix series about their lives and their story which deeply moved me. It motivated me to say this is a woman who deserves to visit our country and share her story and undoubtedly her visit will strengthen so many women around the world.
Wow. The mutual admiration between Marquez and the Duchess was on display from their enthusiastic hug during their first meeting, and it was the beginning of the whirlwind tour that took them to three different cities and introduced them to music, theaters, and fashion of the Latin American nation. Last week, they visited two primary schools in Bogota. Every time I think about it, I'm thinking of that little girl where they took part in lesson about digital literacy and emotional well-being during their visit to Colegio La Gil Givalda, they were serenaded by a group of kindergartners and Megan said in Spanish, you're the same age as my son Archie. Though playing the drum seemed <laughs> the drum again, I'm thinking of Archie playing drum for uh, Megan. You wanna hear it again? <laughs> Okay, so playing the drum seems to be something she only does on tours. It's surprisingly her similar the activities in Colombia were to the type of events they might attend when they're closer to home. For the last few years, Megan and Harry have visited classrooms across the U.S. and the U.K. and Megan has given similar remarks about the importance of female empowerment in cities from Los Angeles to Austin to Abuja, Nigeria. But the main focus on the trip was connected to the recent Archwell Foundation push to raise awareness about the harms that children might encounter online and provide support to victims. The centerpiece was a panel where they spoke about their work and it had a similar format and topic to the one they hosted in New York City in October 2023. And his remark, Harry mentioned, the couple shared belief that information integrity is a fundamental right. The statement is reminiscent of the conclusion from the 2021 Aspen Institute panel on information disorder, which counted Harry as one of its participants. Cyberbullying and misinformation might have felt like first world problem as uh, the internet was in its infancy, but Megan and Harry's presence in Colombia underscore the fact that they're becoming increasingly common in all countries regardless of socioeconomic status. In November, Colombia is hosting the first ever global ministerial conference on ending violence against children among the UNICEF and other organizations, and Megan and Harry's visit was intended to highlight some of the issues that will be addressed during the summit, and the statement about the 35th anniversary of the adoption of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Children, the Human Rights Organization explained why the time is right for a return to conversation about violence against children. Global change like the rise of digital technology, environmental change, prolonged conflict, and mass migration are completely changing childhood. It read, today's children face new threats to their right, but they also have new opportunities to realize their right. Over the weeks, the Sunday Times published an in-depth look at Harry's life and career with commentary from some of the friends and employees he left behind in the UK who worried that his California lifestyle might not be enough to what California lifestyle might not be enough to sate the prince's ambitions how do they know Harry's doing what he's doing what he wants to do what is the purpose of Prince Harry and what is Prince Harry's purpose? It's none of their business. Okay, all of this, he was willing to do all of this in the UK, but they kicked him out. This is not what the UK was, uh, uh, what is it, uh, was looking for. Look at after he left, riot, the hate, and all of this skyrocketed. So Harry and the institution are not on the same page. Okay, a former aide told the, oh, there's the thing here. Uh, a former aide told the newspaper, the work with Invictus is great and fatherhood was the role he most wanted, so perhaps uh, those are enough for him. You, uh, uh, what? They're trying to set boundaries for him? How do they know? Many of these things that Harry is doing now, he hand them. He hand them. There was one interview he did with, uh, uh, with his brother and I think Matt uh, Lauer from NBC in U.S. Um, was asking them what they want to do. Harry literally told him what he wanted to do. Meanwhile, the brother uh, was making fun of him. Okay, Harry is doing exactly what he wanted to do. This is the interview that I'm talking about. Like what? Well, when I was younger, I wanted to be a policeman, but that happened. I wouldn't want to be that now. <laughs> the most popular cop on the yeah, block. Exactly. <laughs> what would you want to do? I think it's... it's, it's uh, I don't know. I don't. It's a really tricky question. It goes through my head lots. I'd like to fly helicopters, definitely. 
I'd like to be some sort of heli pilot, you know, working for the UN maybe or something like that. Go off and do some, you know, I'd, I'd have to be doing something active um, outside and, and doing sort of fun stuff but with an edge to helping people. How about you, Harry? He'd probably sit and play computer games and drink beer. Professional. <laughs> no, I, I honestly, I, you know, I don't know how well this would get out, but I'd probably live in Africa. I'd like to spend all my time out there. Um, in, in a humanitarian? Uh, and both. It would be a humanitarian aspect and as well as a sort of saf safari aspect. As a job, it would probably be a safari guide and then... It would be really good for me because he wouldn't be around, you see, so I'd get the highest myself. At the, same, at the same time, you know, splitting my time between a charity, you know, in the Sutu, probably the Sutu as well. If, you know, if I became normal tomorrow, then I'd have yeah, That word normal comes up a lot, doesn't it? It really is. It's kind of the, the holy grail out there. I feel abnormal. <laughs> and, and you've been to the United States, you spent a little time in Tennessee, you mentioned Disney World. What are your impressions of the U.S.? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! No. You know that's the headline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, <laughs> Harry calls U.S. horrible. Um, no, it's. I think it's, it's such an amazing place. It's so vast on, on such a massive scale, and there's so much to do, and it's so different. I love America. I think it's brilliant. I have a really good time over there. Um, everyone's really friendly, welcoming, and and yet they're not. They're very good at sort of not being too invasive. No, it's it's cool, and, and it'd be nice to get back to America sometime soon. Mm. All right, but everything else is a bit woolly. It's foreign to these people because they're not about that, but Harry was. Okay, I always thought he wanted more from life. I can't help it, but think uh, he must be wondering, where do I go from here? Harry's doing exactly. <laughs> these people are ridiculous. How the hell are you going to be thinking for him? He literally told people what he wanted to do. He wanted to work with human, do this kind of thing. Everything that he told Matt Lau, this is what he's doing and more. In Colombia, Harry's answer to that question was on display, uh, and if his former confidant were able to see it up close, maybe they wouldn't be so confused. <laughs> and their post-royal work, Megan and Harry have tried to change up the old royal routine, and May Afam Onyama, the CEO of uh, GEANCO Foundation, who accompanied the couple on their Nigeria trip, told Vanity Fair that their goal are about doing, not just looking. I was really touched when they said it's not just going to be a speech and a photo app. They want to leave something, leave a legacy, Onyoma said. That's very important to them from my experience with them and their team, leaving a legacy and impact and really helping people in direct, tangible way. All right. So that's that. This is the thing that Harry was trying to tell his family. And Harry told the queen as well, take advantage of Meghan's present and the family. Uh, because he saw this is what was needed but hey they were like nope that's not what we want instead they team up to get him out of there all uh, right so there's no comment let's go to the next tweet okay so there's that here <laughs> the squad are laughing that's so we tweet they black their comments Okay, why do the British media make an application to cover the irrelevant non-tax funded royals on their private visit? I love the power and control that Harry and Meghan now have. All right, we tweeted that uh, entire British media ban. <laughs> they asked for it. All right, let's listen to that. But in this case, um, Harry turned down, uh, Harry's team turned down every application from everything from the BBC to the ITV to even you know, very pro Harry and Meghan newspapers like The Telegraph in UK, all of those were turned down and they invited one single digital journalist from Harper's Bazaar that did... But in this no case... Um and Harry and Meghan told them exactly what he wants to do. All right? he, as he was leaving, he said who he was not going to deal with and who he wanted... They wanted to interact with... Um, young upcoming uh, journalists and things like that because they have a platform they know these young upcoming journalists you know will need to be known so heavy told them everything and he's they following too all right the telegraph is a poor heavy and megan paper since when that's what i'm wondering and i was like they don't need to be poor heavy and megan all they have to do was report the truth let's see here that's for a comment here LOL. She said that because it's the only one on their comes email list. There's the laugh here. Yeah, we know since Camilla Tomney is a liar. That woman is a brand <laughs> adult. All right. 
Okay, the telegraph, poor Harry and Meghan pulled that other one. Did she confuse it with the Guardian? Because I know she did not mean the Tory graph. But will they get the message? Nope. I'm not even laughing. I'm just solely and completely speechless and total disbelief. The very same UK press who called them stupid, irrelevant, boring, fails and flips at the same UK press that applies to cover them in Colombia. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm laughing myself into a six pack. <laughs> She's laughing hard. Okay, nothing about the action surprises or bothers me anymore. The Sussex is all free and that's what I've been wanted since day one. Okay, after this, that's it. Uh, so that's probably a derangement. So this is a couple who were giving British titles and yet, oh God, <laughs> Kleenex. All right, Telegraph post Sussex. I know they still get direct info from the Sussex, but still notice how they said Harry Steam. If Harry is controlled by Megan, then why is it calling the shots? Okay, so there's that. Uh, you love to see. Lit. All right. That's a... Okay. Anna Marie Wilson worked for Harper Bazaar years ago. She now does PR for uh, Michael Kors. And do you remember Diana shot by Patrick on the cover of Harper's Bazaar? He was born on this day. Okay. Let me move on. All right. Looks like I will not be covering the other ones. All right, there's this here. Um, ah, hi. okay. Prince Harry, babe, look them ugly. Ho, oh, crying again. I love this era. The yellow teeth hating from outside and the rain is so poetic. We pray for time like this. All right, so there's that. Um, Harry. We heard that already, that they are dancing. There's that, how to clear. <laughs> oh my God. All right, there's the word here. We're cleared, okay? What part of no that we are never engaging with you don't the British media understand? All right, let's get to the next tweet. Uh, oh my God, I keep on missing those numbers. I think something's wrong with my mouse. It will not highlight everything. Next tweet, okay. Pre-Royal Megan is known to be bilingual. We're going to see more of the extra 50% part of Megan that the royal family wanted to erase out of the royal history book. She's getting started. Better buy anti-incandescent drugs. Okay, so there's no comment and this is from the Vanity Fair. Uh, we've known that Meghan Markle was proficient Spanish speaker ever since her pre-royal days when she spoke about the stand working at the U.S. Embassy in Buenos Aires, but it wasn't until this weekend during her four-day tour of Colombia with Prince Harry that the public saw those skills at work. At the Sunday panel in Cali, the country's third largest city, Meghan delivered remarks in Spanish at an event aimed at uplifting the nations of Afro-Caribbean women. Okay, so there's no comment. And that's from the article that I read. Did I read it already or? No, that was a different um, screenshot. I think. All right. Uh, it's watching the trolls and the British media cry that Prince Harry denied them access to his and Meghan engagement. How many times does he need to tell you he doesn't effing like you? This is why no one believes the lies you write about him and his family. All right. They're so stupid and entitled. It's ridiculous. What the heck are they expecting? Okay. So that's the same thing again, you know, about Harry not inviting them. But in this case, um, Harry turned down, uh, Harry's team turned down every application from everything from the BBC to the ITV to even, you know, very pro Harry and Meghan newspapers like The Telegraph in UK. All of those were turned down and they invited one single digital journalist from Harper's Bazaar that did. But in this All case... Right. Um, Let's go to the next tweet. Next time that I see it again, if I, it's in one of my tweets i will not share it megan's posture is always on point yep i'm almost done actually i have one more me too there's the clap and there's the smile and people are talking about the vanity fair which i read already okay let me read some of the comments under this this is extra and megan Marco and prince harry have reinvented the royal tour and between the dancing and cultural experience in colombia the duke and duchess set for some real talk that emphasized the global nature of the issues they're quickly becoming experts in that's a quote from vanity fair all right that's an ad brilliant i think this is a case of toxic people resenting you for leaving them behind and thriving instead of failing and become and coming back to them with your tail between your legs the way they expected you to 
This shit makes me angry. The fatherhood and motherhood is the excuse they use the most to defend the overall laziness, very light on actual meaningful work agenda of rank, that's William and Kate, but Harry can be satisfied just being a husband, dad, and running Invictus. It's so laughable that they think the royal actually do anything. Nothing they do do help the people. All they do is take. They do the very barest of minimal. And as if Harry wanted to live his life being served up for his egghead brother to mistreat because of jealousy. All right. It's always a bitter former aid. <laughs> There's all of that. Okay. So this is my last one. <laughs> Kensington Palace bad form. <laughs> okay, that's all right. So that's it. Let's do a prayer. What should we do a prayer? Prayer for. Let's do prayer for thanks because they went. It was very successful, and they went back home and uh, safe and sound. Prayer for thanks. Let's do that. Okay, prayer of appreciation. Dear Lord, we rejoice in our gratitude for the gifts you have given us today have enriched our life beyond measure. We thank you for the love you show us and the sacrifices you made to support us. May we continue to appreciate your love each and every day. Amen. All right, after this, that's it. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings you have bestowed on my life. You have provided me with more than I could ever have imagined. You have surrounded me with people who always look out for me. You have given me family and friends who bless me every day with kind words and action actions all right so that's it please take a moment to subscribe like and share if you want to support this channel there's a paypal link and the cash app link in the description you could donate those who have donated thank you and don't forget to check my shop and zazo and Spreadshop. zazo have puzzles Spreadshop have t-shirts and all of that i haven't worked on them uh, in a while so i need to put more design and stuff like that okay thank you and uh that's it